what we want to do is upload a file now. What are the updates to next cloud? All right, there we have it. It's actually generating much faster than I would expect. All right, so we're back with another AI video and today's video is gonna be private GPT. I love the fact how I could use AI to perform mundane tasks like read documents for me or do something that will make my job a little bit easier. And in this case, private GPT will actually allow you to interact with the documents you upload to it, which is extremely cool. Now I've done this video before about, I think eight or nine months ago, but it was very, very unintuitive. Everything was still text prompt. You had to upload files to a specific folder. It was a lot harder to use, but now back with checking it out again. And now it's on version 0.2 and it does have a GUI, which makes everything a lot easier to use. So we're gonna be checking that out. Now, the installation task is a little bit tedious. I actually had a little hard time trying to figure it out, but if you guys are watching this, you could always pause, slow down, and uh, review what I'm doing at that point. But ultimately I'm doing this for myself. So I actually remember these things later down the road if I need to redo this. So anyway, let's jump over to my desktop and here we have the GitHub of uh, private GPT. Again, it's the same GitHub as when I reviewed 10 months ago, but it's just a different version. And they changed a lot. They actually use something called Poetry, which I've never used before on how to install stuff, which is very interesting. Now, on their GitHub, they actually have a documentation site, which is something you should check out. It doesn't, it's not as easy to read as I would like. It doesn't give you all the things that you need to do to install everything. So in my case, like I said, I had to take a little time to figure this out, but all in all, I did, and it wasn't too bad at the end. Now, one of the main things that it requires is a Python 3.11, and it has to use poetry, and then you have all these other steps along with it. Now, these were the two things that I had a little bit of an issue with, because I am running uh, Ubuntu 22.04, so my Python version only goes up to version 3.10, and I can't upgrade it anymore because of the distribution that I'm on. So if you're on 23.04 or 23.10, you already have 3.11, so that's good for you. But if you don't, uh, we do have to install a PPA package to upgrade it to 3.11. So that's what we're gonna do first. Here I'm gonna clear the screen and I'm gonna do a sudo add apt repository PPA colon dead snakes slash PPA. Now this will allow me to install 3.11 and we still have to do some configurations after this because we're gonna be running 3.10 and 3.11 at the same time. So we're gonna do sudo apt install python 3.11. Let me move this up a little. Hit yes and let that sync in. I'm also gonna install venv. So we're gonna do sudo apt install python 3.11 dash venv. Oops, typo. Those are the two main things that you need. So now, with that being said, even though if I type Python right now, it's still gonna be 3.10. So it didn't really upgrade anything, you just installed it. So what we need to do is update our alternatives. So we're gonna do sudo update alternative. Again, hit tab to autocomplete. Install user bin python3, and we're gonna call this python3, and user user bin slash python 3.10 and we're gonna put this as 110 again typo install all right we're gonna have to do the same thing to 3.11 so where i just hit the up arrow go back 3.11 and we're gonna change this to 100 instead so now i have two configurations in the alternatives so we're gonna do sudo update alternatives config python3. So now I should have two options. You could see that I have 3.10, 3.10, and 3.11. So what I'm gonna do as default is set it to number two. And now if I want to switch it back to 3.10, I could just use uh, update alternative config and then I can change that back. So now if I type in python3, we have version 3.11.7. That's exactly what we want. So now we could do python, 3 dash m pip install pip just in case if it wasn't installed but it is so we're good with that and we're going to do pip 
install poetry. Now, the system default that poetry installs is 1.1, and you need at least 1.7. And the way we're installing it is through pip, not through the system, because technically you could still do app get install python3 slash poetry, and that will give you a very old version. To check on that, you just need to go to poetry. Oh, that didn't work, because if you didn't have this in the path, which is home local bin, uh, that's going to be a problem as well. So we are going to actually do this. We're going to go to nano that bash RC. What we're going to do is export path equals, and then the new thing that we just put in, colon, dollar sign, path. And that will add our new path. I think I have to put this in quotes. So I'm going to put this in quotes just in case. Close that. And let's see, source dot bash RC and echo dollar sign path and yeah there we go we have it now if i type in poetry there you go 1.7 now poetry does work i don't get this error message from before and we are all set to start setting up private gpt now first thing we need to do is git clone this right here so i'm going to copy this paste that in here and it's very small, so that's good. I'm gonna CD into private GPT. And in here, I'm also gonna make a new environment. So I'm gonna do Python 3-M -E -V, -E V. And we're gonna call this folder V E N V. And it's gonna generate a new folder in here uh, called EVNV. So you'll see it right here, EVNV. And to activate it, we just do source V E N V bin slash activate and there we go you see the front has evnv so we're in that environment right now so whatever we install we'll just go into here it won't crash with anything on our system okay now we have to start following the instructions on what they got going on over here so the first thing we need to do is actually in use poetry to install this with ui and because we are planning to run this locally where we're going to be hosting our own llms um, we also want local so what we need to do now is pop back over here and do poetry install with UI comma and local. And we're gonna hit okay. This takes a little bit of time because it installs everything from uh, graphic drivers and everything that you need like CUDA just to get everything up and running. You can see it's actually downloading the CUDA base right over here. Now, while this is happening, I'll just give you a little bit of the specs on this computer that I'm going to be using, which is a 1700X AMD, and the GPU is a 1070 with 8 gigs of RAM. Now, I am going to be running this on a 3080, which is my main desktop PC, but uh, you can still set it up on something like this. All depends on how big your library is and how big you're going to be uploading stuff. So it might use more tokens than you need, but you can configure that to lower the token count so you could actually run it on a smaller GPU. Now, I personally haven't ran it on this machine yet with the 1070, so I actually don't know the speeds of this yet, but I do know that my 3080 is way much faster. All right, there we have it. Everything is installed in this place. Okay, now what we need to do next is poetry run Python scripts and setup. This part will actually download the LLM so you don't have to worry about downloading it and it'll set up a lot of other stuff. So anything that's missing, it will download it, especially the model itself. Now the model it's using, it's Minstrel 7B Instruct version 0.2, which is supposedly the best one for this right now for a 7B model. Now, if you want, you can download your own models and then paste it into the models folder and um, use that and change it over instead. And you do have to change some configurations in the setup to reflect the new model that you have downloaded. But for now, I'm keeping everything as default. So if you think that this is taking a lot of space, just wait until the next step. I'm gonna open a new terminal over here. And while that's happening, I am gonna check if I have NVCC, which is CUDA. And if I don't have that, that means I have to install it, which takes about 5.5 gigs. And to do that, we have to do sudo apt install NVIDIA CUDA toolkit right over here. And this should be five gigs. And I am gonna hit, are we almost done with this? We are almost done with this. 
Okay, now I can hit yes. And it's gonna download and install uh, NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. And then we can actually compile the LLM CPP to reflect the models that we're using and get this application working. Now, this is where the next step would come in is if you go down here. Now, if you're running Windows, you have your command over here on how to do that. If you're running Mac, they have a different command. And if you're running uh, Linux or Windows uh, WSL, uh, you run this command here. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this for now because that's what we're gonna need. Uh, that's not it. Okay, we're gonna wait for this to install. All right, now we could check NVCC version. And there we go, we have CUDA um, compiler driver. And then we could head back into our private GPT folder and run this make command. All right, there we have it. Everything is all set up. Don't worry about this little thing. I could upgrade it later, but we have everything that we need to get private GPT working. So let's get rid of that. And the next command that we need is actually in the manuals because we have to use profiles. So we do have to export this PGPT profile. And what we're gonna be using is called local. And if you wanna change any settings on the local profile, you could just go to settings and this is the file, the YAML file you could go in there and change whatever settings, which I'm not familiar with. Like I said, I, I do know this project. It took me a while to get it up and going, but I don't know every aspect of it. So if you want to know what those settings do, I think local just means that you're going to be running off your own local LLMs instead. So what we need to do now is uh, PGP profiles, local, make, run. And you can see right over here, it says default and local. It's using a default and local uh, profile and there we have it it's up and running as soon as you see this you know it's up and running so let's give this a try 127.0.0.1 colon 8001 and there we have our private GPT so what we want to do is upload a file now and we could do upload I have something here which is a full featured list.md and it does read MD files doc files docx PDFs a ton of stuff CSVs what I have in this full featured list is let me head over to my downloads folder right now. And this was in show notes that I was using for my next cloud video. So it actually tells me what got updated. Unified search, all this other stuff, decks. So this is a big list of files just to tell you what was updated on Nextcloud 7. So now I could actually ask it any question because it got the documents that I want. So let's say generate quick summary of documents in list form. So it gives me a quick summary of the main things is combining activities, PDF annotations, uh, freehand drawing, and save button for the PDF. It's not as clear cut as I wanted to, but you can define it a little bit more. Um, what are the updates to next cloud? All right, there we have it. It's actually generating much faster than I would expect because it's similar speeds to what I would get on my 3080. So interesting enough, the 1070 crunches through this pretty quick. Again, you can actually see some of the progress that's being made over here. And it's able to generate the stuff that is in the file. It's pretty cool. Now, I did use CSV files and everything and uh, PDFs. And it's able to read through the PDFs and explain stuff to me a lot easier. So, again, your mileage may vary. But it does help a lot that I am able to host my own local GPT to read files. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I will sprinkle along little AI videos down the path as I find it interesting enough to show off on the channel. And if you guys have any questions about this, check their issue boards. They actually have a lot of uh, questions that are already answered in their issue board. So check it over there first before asking anything down in the comments. Most of the time, anything that goes into YouTube comments, sometimes it gets missed. So yeah, definitely check their issue board. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.